Well, good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? We have a little bit different day set out for today because it's Father's Day. I am wearing my dad's root beer socks. I just needed to let everyone know that that was happening. So I'm going to invite the, we, I think we called Mother's Day the Mother's Board, but I couldn't think of anything fun for the dads. So just like all the, the dads, if you just come up, Rob and Ken and, and Corey and Cam, and we have something prepared for you that's, that's, these are all personal. This is all something from our spirit. As they're coming up, I just ask that you would pray. If you're a dad, if you just stand up, I want to pray for you specifically. Father, thank you that you are the father, that you are the ultimate example of what it means to be a dad. I just thank you for all the dads that are here, all the dads that are represented here, all the dads that maybe are overseas or they're working tirelessly, really hard. (laughs) I pray that you would bless them, bless their energy, bless their creativity, and bless their fatherhood. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Source, Father, Source, heaven and earth intertwine. He is power, my lifeline. Abide in me, I am the vine, cut me off and you'll die. Father, Source, from the beginning of time. As a dad, how can I be a source to mine when I'm broke and beaten all of the time? No love to give because I live on empty since my father left me. I work my butt off nine to five, hustle and grind. They ask for toys and shoes. All I have is dimes, no money. And if I hear that I'm not your dad one more time, what a fine source am I for mine? I should be the father to my kids. They should see father source and how I father. They should see a source unlike mother. My presence should tether them to reality. My words should feed their identity. My hugs should heal their fragility. My example should strengthen their mentality. My patience should develop their ability. My love should impact their destiny. My leadership should give them and guide them to eternity. But day by day, I fear I'm falling short. How can I be a source for my family? I'm not home most of the work week. And when I'm home, I'm deadbeat. Just call me deadbeat like a hunter returning home without meat. Why can't I supply just one of their needs? Shelter, food, water, food, water, dance lessons, shelter, Wi-Fi, shoes, shelter, food, basketball, pitchers, water, gas, car, food, water, shelter, insurance, college, a wedding to pay for, retirement to plan for, food. Dang, I forgot to pick up bread. The father source is mine and I am his. Because he is, I'm able to father my kids. They see father's source in how I father. They see a source unlike their mother. My presence tethers them to reality. My words feed their identity. My hugs heal the fragility. My example strengthens their mentality. My patience develops their ability. My love impacts their destiny. My leadership guides them to eternity. In regard to source, the boundaries for being a stepdad as far as the responsibilities and expectations are often blurred. But love clarifies the lines. And in that light, I offer a letter to my stepdaughters. 
Dear Annika and Addison, stepping into the world of being a stepfather always makes me think of the verse that says, walk by faith and not by sight. As in all parenting, being a stepdad is a continual walk of faith. Thank you for being gracious to me as I first found and continue to find my stride. Like most first steps, ours together were just a bit awkward. I was powerfully nervous when I met you. I seemed to be stuck in a continual state of wondering what you were wondering every second of our first afternoon together. As we said hello for the first time in this very sanctuary on a Sunday after church, I thought, do they think I have to go to the bathroom all the time with my knees pinched together? As we got our sandwiches to go to NIC Beach, we went to Pita Pit, and I wondered, do they think I'm an old man when I get out of the car? And then, the most awkward moment of all. When we got everything set up at the beach, we sat in our lawn chairs in silence. Oh, is this hurting them as much as it's hurting me right now? Oh, Lord, come quickly. And he did. Much like Abraham found mercy stuck in a thicket for his son, you, girls, found a plastic ball in the long grass at the edge of the beach and had mercy on us all. We proceeded to play a very unique and stationary form of beach volleyball. <laughs> I am so thankful that our journey began in laughter. And now, as we walk out this constant act of faith together, I'm not nervous anymore, because faith worketh by love. And I am in love indeed. Most fathers of the biological variety fall in love almost instantaneously. They look at their baby's eyes, they hold their tiny human in their arms and rock them to sleep, or gaze at their little pinky fingernails, their almost invisible eyebrows, and even their nostrils. And you wonder, how does air actually get through those little holes? And boom, it's there. An irresistible, unbreakable, for the rest of your life kind of love is fully and forever present. Well, girls, first, if you find me staring at your pinky fingernails or your nostrils, run away. That would just be weird. But know that I have a, for the rest of my life, kind of love for you in my heart. It happened when we watched Barbie's treehouse together when you were homesick. And when we laughed over Calvin and Hobbes car, uh, comic strips on a Saturday morning. And when we invented and played that rather risky game of kitchen ball that we still need to not let your mother know about because we almost broke lots of stuff. It even happened when you only complain just a little bit about those very undercooked oozing pancakes that I would make you for breakfast. As you grow up, my deepest desire is for you to fall in step with love himself, the one who I believe redemptively paved the way for me to know and love you. As you walk out your journey of faith, your own journey of faith, we, your mother and I, want to guide you where we can and where we should. We also want to give you room to figure things out for yourself. Along the way, know that stepdads wrestle with the dynamics of parenting too. Our brains are in constant tension. I need to tell them everything they need to know becomes, I think I need to lecture them less. I need to tighten up those boundaries, bring on the restrictions. 
becomes, I think I'm suffocating them. And I need to fix all their problems. No pain allowed becomes, come on, Ken. You got them to let them grow up. And it's not really about you anyway. In this struggle to parent well, mistakes are made. But as my mama used to tell me, honey, when I make a mistake, know that I make it for all the right reasons. I love you. Having you girls in my life shows me over and over again how profoundly mom was right. I love you. My mistakes and all. So in many ways, you girls have made it so easy on me. We have a lot of life together. And only once did one of you say, Addison, <laughs> you're not my dad. And you even told it to me in kind of a happy way. Like, it dawned on you that you could use this fact as some sort of leverage when I tell you to clean your room or do a chore. And you know what? You're right. I'm not your dad. Your father loves you very much. But as your stepdad, I hope you know that you are cherished <laughs> beyond description and know that I would give everything I have to give and that I'm honored to walk every step with you on this road that has brought us together. All right. When I was praying about this last night, I uh, asked our Father to give me a scripture that would uh, embody this entire moment. And in his still small voice, he lovingly whispered a personalized version of Revelation 21.5. I make all things new. Before I read my letter, I must share the context of how it came to be. It is a short story co-authored by Yahweh and me. The story is about a flower that I had mistaken for a weed. And after a decade of growth, you all joined me in witnessing the bloom. It all started with our child dying in the womb. Today, I believe it ends with sons and daughters encountering our Lord's rachamim, a Hebrew word used for compassion or mercy deriving from the word rachem, meaning womb. For the part of the story that I've penned, I chose to write in tears, anguish, and denial for over nine years. After all, the world says, what could a man possibly know about losing something that was never housed in his body? How silly and weak to feel the pain over a dissipating clump of cells. It's not a child if it isn't born. If such thoughts were true, then why was my soul eviscerated every time I'd accidentally unearthed the photo of his ultrasound? I couldn't make sense of it. We often tell ourselves lies to cover up the pain, but the truth of the matter is that our pain is healed as we choose to give it to our Father. Thankfully, Yahweh chose to write his part with poets, priests, and warrior parents over the last four months. He started by using a writer's group, and through Kelly's obedience uh, to Holy Spirit at the end of our group's second meeting, she shared a poem about motherhood. In reflecting and responding to her work, Rob shared his wife Katie's testimony, the fruit of which would ultimately birth our Mother's Day service this year. Having been disturbed uh, by what transpired in our fellowship, I was eager to share it with my wife, Selena. As I read the poem to her and shared my amazement at Katie's story, I was confronted once again with the loss of our child. The same eviscerating pain partnered with a dissociative cry. However, Selena recalled the offer of grief counseling made by the BBs that previous Sunday, an offer I'd usually decline, but I chose to accept because my ears could hear Holy Spirit's voice in hers. Of course, Daryl and Sherry accepted my request, and in the peace of their home, they prayed for me, blessed me, 
and tasked me to write this letter to my son. I have taken care to explain the forming of this story as an encouragement. To those of you who hold on to hidden pain, our father is waiting for his Father's Day gift. If you are willing, take courage and give him your trust by exchanging the pain he paid for on the cross for his peace and joy. But the true beauty and the testimony of my healing and the letter that I read next is that it's not about me. It is about our father taking the hurt and brokenness of his children who trust him to make all things new. Hello, my son. There's so much my heart wants to express to you and much that I don't know how to say. What I can confess is that I've spent the last 10 years burying my sadness over you deep in my soul. I know that eternity does not bear such sadness. For this, I'm so very grateful to God. It may seem very silly from where you sit and who you're with, but in the confines of time, Father's light is driving out a thing called darkness. That darkness seems to have prevented us from holding hands or from your mother's and my joyful tears washing over your face on your birthday. The seed of your body was shrouded in the excitement of your arrival. But I want you to know that I loved you before you were here and I love you now you've gone. Since you are with who love is, you know there is nothing in time or space that will ever keep him from us. Praise our Lord for his kindness, for his mercy. However, my boy, I do miss you. I miss you with an intensity that sneaks around the halls of my heart until I catch it in the corner of my eye. I want to hold your face between the palms of my hand and see what God created in your eyes. To know the essence Jesus whispered into your being to have my ears blessed by your beautiful voice. To feel the weight of your chest pressed upon mine as I lay in wonder of our Father's awe. I want to know what it feels like to sing songs over you. All your hair falls from my fingertips as I play with it. I want to experience the peace that comes with holding you as you bury your face in my neck. I want to feel the joy of holding your hand and helping your unsteady legs find their footing. To know how my spirit, soul, and body would react as you emit laughter. To listen to the wind with our eyes closed as I held you in my lap. And to wonder what mysterious tapestries your imagination would spin when your mom and I would read you books. To partake in an ancestral embrace as our foreheads met and we shared breath. Always is my love for you. No matter how many beautiful moments we were to share in this dimension, I know that it pales in comparison to life as you know him. It is the assurance of faith to affirm truth holds you in his arms. This is the beginning of my healing. It's time to give you your very own room in my heart so that I can joyfully surrender the space to our king for healing. When he fills this space, I'll be closer to knowing him as you do. And I can't wait to know him as you do. Isn't it his beautiful nature to work with you to heal me? To reveal that all my hopes and dreams for you have come to fruition in him. And that while I did not get to teach you about him myself, you know him in the way that I do not yet. For this I can say praise him. He is holy. My greatest joy and privilege would have been to teach you to seek and long for him. To let his light permeate and shine through the lens of your soul for those lost and looking in the dark. But while there has been a longing for your presence, you've always belonged to him, just as every child he is knit does. And you couldn't ask for a better teacher. Now it is our deepest desire to teach your sisters and brother what we can of what you already know. So we can all sit before in the throne of El Roy and lift up your song before him. While I may still cry when I see you in the passing by of your room in my heart, it will be because I see you dancing with Jesus and smiling at his face. It will be because I hear the song of your heart lifted to our Lord. It will be because I catch the scent of your fragrance poured out upon his feet. 
My tears will only express my marvel at the heart he gave you and the heart he asked for us. I love you, my boy, until the end of my time and the always of eternity. Whew. All right, everybody, bye. That was enough. That was amazing. Well, I wanted to share a song that I wrote um, about a year ago. It's called Father and Son. And uh, once you become a parent, um, you kind of have this realization that I, you know, I'm a human. I cannot raise a perfect human, especially because I'm not perfect. But you have this realization and almost kind of this fear crept into me when I when I realized it, like, Am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to be able to raise kids who, who have the right values, who make the right choices? You know, because I have, I have a father, and, and he had a father, and they weren't perfect. And, I, and all of my issues that were transferred down from, from my ancestors, I'll probably pass some stuff over to my kids. And I'm not super stoked about that. <laughs> you know? And uh, so this song, um, this song is about that. I think, um, I think I put the lyrics on the, on the screen. So I'm just going to sing the song and, and read the lyrics and follow along with me. It's not a worship song, so no, no pressure. <laughs> Ever since the fall of man, so hard for us to understand The choices that we make today echo in eternity The weight of all this in our hands, will we learn from our father's sins In the cycles of regret, we all know it well Father and Son, the most fragile bond. Father and Son, the most fragile bond. Abraham's own was traumatized. Isaac's boy fed him endless lies. Jacob played the favorite game. Jealousy such a wicked thing. Absalom a product of neglect David always was indifferent The apple falls right up against The old family tree Father and son The most fragile bond Father and son The most fragile bond we try to run from our kindred ties Our struggles pass down the family line The legacies we leave behind Our children bear the things we try to hide What will my inherit, Lord? Will they reap what they did not sow? Help me, God, I need to know Can it end with me? Father and Son, the most fragile bond. Father and Son, the most fragile bond. A perfect one came to show the way, to prove it don't have to be this way. A son and father in harmony. Restored what Adam had lost that day Children who have gone astray Your hearts no longer have to turn away It's time to let him break the curse today Healing is here Father and Son, 
the most precious bond father and son the most precious bond father and son the strongest of bonds Well, I was asked to uh, wrap this up <clears throat> by uh, connecting the source. And the source, of course, is the Father who's over us all. And while what I'm, not, while I'm about to read is not autobiographical by any means, it's probably more the song of my life, a blessing. So... Uh, if I can keep it together, here goes. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. In learning to be a son, we lean into the source, the spring of our conception, and hear our father's voice ever clearer as the stream widens and the years lengthen. Hear the father's blessing from your earliest beginnings. My child, I am your father. At some point in eternity before time, I faced you. I faced your spirit with Jesus and Holy Spirit. We spoke your name with great intensity. We determined the time of your physical appearing, where you would be and what you would do, it was good, very good. I bless your spirit's authority over all parts of you. It's my heart that your spirit was made specially to recognize and commune with me. This gift will remain the heart of your hunger all your days to come. At the moment conception came, I blessed that moment when sperm penetrated egg and photons of light exploded and spoke my life into the moment. I blessed the growing and crafting of bones, blood, and tissue in your mother's womb. I blessed the groundwork for the growing of your soul. I blessed this formation time and cover in my love all trauma that may have gone on around you. I bless the time of your birth. It was a great day of joy to me, and I remove from you any foreign thought ever entertained of why was I born. I'm your father. I love you. You belong here. I bless every cell of your body. I bless you down to your DNA to be forever intertwined with my love. I bless the days of your growing childhood. I redeem your years of wonder. Your playtime, which was key to your acting on small, growing visions. I bless and redeem your learning seasons and places as you left the nest of home for schooling under another's care. I was there when fear arose, and I cover you when voices were sharp and hands failed. When the injustice of violation of your soul and body happened, I asked you to please forgive your perpetrators who were often wounded in their tender years. What happened should not have happened to one of your innocents. I cover your wounds with my gentleness and speak the balm of I love you onto them. <clears throat> I bless you to receive from me 
and never again to be on the treadmill of performance for love. I'm your father. I bless your growth into the change of life showing in your body where you began to become a woman or a man. You are my daughter, my son, in whom I always wanted. I'm glad your body is changing. I celebrate this wonder. I'm not ashamed of these things. It is my will that you grow into reproductive maturity. I delight your mind is evolving to discover more fully who you will be when it's time to leave your mom and dad. You are my son, my daughter, and whom I'm very pleased to call my own. I bless you as you choose your path in and of life. I bless you to dream big, very big. I bless you as a grown adult. I love you as you are. I bless your mind, your will, your emotions. To experience life as I see it. I bless you as a husband, a wife, a father, a mother. If you are graced to choose a celibate life, I bless you in that special calling. May you mirror all my attributes to your children and spiritual children for generations to follow. I bless you well into your future to live long and be known for love that proceeds from me, for wisdom, how to build, and justice. I bless you to understand and value good inheritance. I bless you with the joy of gently persuading others in unveiling me as the life giver, for you have become a life giver also. You will be a safe place, a repository of peace as you stay in my arms of love. My face of love is ever before you. Amen. <laughs> As we tied things up and, and brought things to a conclusion, it's kind of a beginning as well, because in hearing everything that people offered, my heart is wide open. And we want to be open to the ministry of what the Lord has for us today. Um, and I, as... I was preparing, and it, it kept showing up as people were reading today, and as I stepped up to the podium, um, in my world of being a stepfather, it can be a complicated situation on both sides. Uh, for someone who has kids who ha now have a stepfather, it's very natural to say, who is this dude who's living with my children? And it's complicated, and I, I saw a golf ball. And if you peel off the cover of a golf ball, there's a rubber band that is very, very vastly twined together. But if you break that rubber band, it goes and it unravels very quickly. And for anyone who is kind of stuck either as a step parent, not knowing where you fit or a father or mother who has to deal with having a step parent for their children, I would just like to say that the Lord would like to unravel that for you today because it's all about him and it's all about your kids. Okay. 
So, Father, we thank you in this broken world where families are under attack for your redemption. And we pray, Father, for those out here in this room today and in our community who are dealing with the realities of step parentism, if that's a word. For those who are step parents, for those who are having to deal with step parents, for children having to deal with step parents. We pray, Father, that your grace and your mercy and your unfailing love would break the outer hardness of what can happen and that you would break the rubber band that tangles everything. And we pray, Father, that you would bring us all to truth in our situations. Help us know the foundations of redemption that are there for us in you. It was while the mics were passing. Uh, yeah, I I just want to extend the invitation and open open up the front. If you if you feel like uh, disconnected from the source today, uh, the Father's here to restore that. If you if you struggle with confidence, uh, if you if you struggle with uh, purpose, um, identity, um, the Father's here. <laughs> One activity I like to do to test <clears throat> whether I truly believe that I'm a son or not is I like to close my eyes, so close your eyes with me. Uh, what if you were immediately teleported to the throne of God right now? You're right before the Lord. What would he say? What do you think he would say to you right now? The first words out of his mouth, what do you think he would say? I mean, there's what the Bible tells us he would say, but what is in your heart? What is your heart? Know that he's, he would say. Is there... Is there any fear in that? Do you think he would point out? Would do you, do you think he would point out your flaws? Do you think he would point out that you've been hiding? Do you think that he would he would say something about how distant you've been? Or in the true nature of a good father, would he say? I'm so glad you're here. And I see you, and I know you, and I love you. If, if that little activity that we just did was hard for you, there might be some things you want to deal with, with an issue of seeing God as your father, as your loving, true father who will always see you no matter what. And there was a time in my life where I, I lived my life thinking that he didn't see me. And, and so I could do whatever I want. But at the, in, in deep down, though, I didn't feel seen. I didn't feel like the Father actually saw who I really was, so I had to be something that I, that I wasn't to earn his affection, to earn his love. So the, the, Lord, the, the heart of the Father's here today so we're going to invite the ministry team forward. Um, and if you want prayer on Father's Day, it's a pretty good day to take advantage of that, right? <laughs> so we'll have the ministry team to come forward. If you struggle with mindsets of lack, if you struggle with like a poverty spirit, the true source is here. 
If you're stuck in slavery and trying to earn your way through to earn affection from the Lord, to earn a, and to only get your affirmation from others, the affirmation from the Father is here today, and it's time to come receive. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand as we close. You can begin to make your, make your way up front. You don't have to be a dad. You're, just, you're a child of God. And if any of that resonate with you, then this is the time to respond. If you just need a moment in front of the Lord at the altar, let's, let's take it. We have, we have plenty of time. Your smoker's going to get, get up to heat in enough time. If you're feeling empty and broken, if you're feeling like there's just not enough, there's not enough time, there's not enough money, there's not enough energy, you feel, you're feeling depleted, He is the source. He wants you to abide in Him this morning. So as I'm praying, as, we're, as I'm praying right now, just if that's you, I want you to move up front. So I'm, I feel empty. I feel like I'm going on depleted. I feel like I'm grinding metal on metal right now. My life isn't producing the fruits of the Spirit. There's the source. The Father is your source. And He's ready to fill you to overflow. So Holy Spirit, we invite you. We thank you, Lord, that you're here. We thank you, Lord, that you are the source. That you are more than enough. You're more than sufficient. It's more than just the physical provision, but it's the spiritual fulfillment. That you're ministering to the hearts of men and women today. You pursuing, I just have this, I just want to challenge you. You're, you pursuing your wholeness in the Lord is the best way to tear down the strongholds of the enemy. Let me say that again. You pursuing your wholeness in the Lord is the best way to tear down the stronghold of the enemy in our culture, attack on identity, so thank you, Father, that you are our Father, who art in heaven, and holy is your name. That you give us today our daily bread, that you bring forth on earth as it is in heaven, that you forgive us our sins as we forgive others, that we're not led into temptation. Thank you that you are the source. We love you, Lord. Thank you for who you are. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. If you need ministries, keep coming forward. We love you guys. Happy Father's Day. Grab a root beer on your way out. We love you. Be blessed.